With the rise of the coquette online niche community and girlhood discourse, one movie has been referenced quite a lot. Sofia Coppola's 2000 film adaptation of the book The Virgin Suicide. Many have said how they wish to see a remake in the perspective of the Lisbon sisters. And while I do agree, I think that this particular scene in the movie best portrays the point of the story. The group of boys who follow or stalk the sisters get hold of Cecilia Lisbon's diary. They gain access to the inner workings of a 13-year-old girl who had just attempted to commit suicide. As well as her sisters Lux, Bonnie, Mary, and Therese. And for all their talk of quote-unquote wanting to understand these girls, they chose to gloss over most of her diary entries. Instead, they are more interested in Lux's sexual exploration. Eventually, they read the rest of her diary entries, but it all felt so intrusive. Coppola's aesthetics and Eugenides' writing made it seem like it wasn't though. But at its core, you have a group of boys who stole something intimate of a girl's and they use her writing to create this fantasy world. They could have asked the girls but were too afraid to start a real conversation with them so they developed these assumptions. To them, unsurprisingly, the Lisbon sisters are only objects to whom they could project their fantasies, given how the girls mostly just keep to themselves. Because of the male gaze, what happened to the Lisbon sisters remains a mystery both to the boys and the audience. Cecilia was the first to go. So what exactly is the male gaze that has seeped its way into the internet lexicon and is so often misused and misunderstood? It all started with Laura Mulvey's 1975 essay, Visual Pleasure and Narrative Cinema, where she discusses the phallocentrism in films and the voyeuristic portrayals of women. According to her, there are three categories of the male gaze. One, that of the man behind the camera, the director, writer, cinematographer, the auteur. Number two, that of the male characters within the story, and three, that of the male audience. Now, I don't mean the movie was intended for male audiences, especially since the clips of the girls always served to further the plot and not just to turn on the audience. Coppola did a beautiful job at portraying girlhood, albeit through a white middle-class lens. The story itself, however, written by a man, exhibits the male gaze and the harm that it causes. Mulvey goes on to explain how, according to Freud, men experience castration anxiety when they see a woman's body and her lack of a male genital. However, when they view women as objects, mostly in dismembered parts, the anxiety goes away. When they don't view women as humans, they could think to themselves, oh, okay, I don't have to worry about losing my thing because women aren't real. They're just objects inferior to me, a man. This is where scopophilia comes in. Looking at a woman's body on screen, men are able to view a woman in fetishistic ways without actually having to start a conversation with one. In a way, they are able to feed their curiosity without having to go through the fear of rejection or having to make small talk or even have a deep conversation with a woman. And this is where a lot of men's misunderstanding of women comes from. In this scene, a boy who came over for dinner at the Lisbon household went snooping in the girls' bathroom. When he sees the tampons, he kind of squirms. There are a number of men who are afraid to talk about periods or even touch a pad or tampon, and yet they think they know so much about women. A boy who wants to date Lux Lisbon asks his dad for advice, and while he and the other boys thought it wasn't helpful, it actually really was. Yeah, yeah, you just need to talk to her at school, you know, about anything, about uh, the weather or school assignments. 
do so. Yeah. So when a story about a group of sisters who creates a suicide pact is written by a man, then it's important to outline the influence of the male gaze. The boys continuously say how they couldn't fathom why the girls are the way they are, and how they could do such a thing. They could never understand why the girls did it because they didn't even ask them what the problem was. They didn't develop a relationship, a friendship with these girls. They didn't ask them about their dreams or aspirations. Even the doctor, who is an expert in his field, didn't understand Cecilia. You're not even old enough to know how bad life gets. Obviously, doctor. You've never been a 13-year-old girl. And 20 years into the future, they still have this obsession over the girls because time stood still for them. And the most pathetic part is how they think it was selfish of the girls to take away their own lives as if they owe these guys something. As if a guy has that much power over a girl. The boys were the ones peeping into their windows with a telescope and sitting across their yard. They stole the girls' things because it gave them pleasure and yet, even in death, the girls are villainized and objectified. Sadly, it's not an uncommon phenomenon. Just look at the likes of Marilyn Monroe. And the concept of the male gaze does not end there. According to Jacques Lacan, the scopic drive or one's voyeurism can very much develop into an unhealthy obsession. This phenomenon remains present especially with the easy access to corn online and the growing disconnect between men and women. And that's exactly what happened to these boys who could not stop thinking about the girls since they didn't and could never have a chance to feed their curiosities about these girls' bodies. These girls make me crazy. I could just feel one of them up just once. So they interview the guys who have come close to Lux Lisbon, especially Trip Fontaine. But as long as they hold on to the male gaze, they would not be able to come close to cracking the mystery. And maybe that's what they want, for the girls to serve as shells to whom they could project these fantasies. Making us happier with dreams than wives. Now we can't talk about the virgin suicide without discussing the woman to whom the sisters get their pastel purity aesthetic from, their mother. It's easy to see why she is blamed for losing her daughters. She puts this pressure on them to conform to a Christian ideal and exacerbates the isolation that they feel. And yet, I can't help but sympathize with her. In her own way, she was trying to protect the girls and only stop letting them go to school after what happened to Lux. She lost her virginity to a boy who tried to get on her family's good side and then abandoned her all night at the school's football field. Lux just wanted to finally have someone she could trust and maybe talk to. But he was just some boy who treated her like a conquest. It was so easy with all the other girls, but she wouldn't look at me. I, uh, I was never the kind to pursue, if you know what I mean. Once the novelty was gone, so was he. I walked home alone that night. I didn't care how she got home, it was weird. I mean, I liked her, I liked her a lot. But out there on the field, it was just different then. The guys in the story only further justify the actions of Mrs. Lisbon. As a woman, I have first-hand accounts of being harassed and taken advantage of by guys. If I had five daughters going through puberty, I would also probably freak out. Sadly for her, trying to keep them sheltered only made things worse. Cecilia's tree parallels the relationship she had with her daughters. Upon knowing that a group of men had to cut down the tree, the four sisters circle it despite the fact that keeping it rooted in its place will only further poison it. And it's not even the tree's fault. The boats didn't bring the fungus from Europe. None of this would have happened in the first place. 
Mrs. Lisbon, however, could have talked to her daughters instead of treating them like precious, powerless dolls, like not allowing them to have friends unless she approves or stopping them from joining things like cheerleading. In a way, she inadvertently did the same thing the guys did to her daughters. And to not be seen or heard, to not be understood by the people around you is a heartbreaking realization for a girl. If only the patriarchy didn't make it so hard. I love Sofia Coppola and the way she shows girlhood in her films, but in the case of this one, I think that we have to look at who the real villains are in the story, and it's not Mrs. Lisbon. Someone who isn't from the United States, despite growing up in private Catholic schools, I was shocked to find out that there are things like purity balls and purity rings in the US that tell young girls to wait for marriage. There is this incredible pressure on teenage girls on who to give their virtue to and when. Even just the mere thought of sex is taboo for girls. According to Paul in her 2014 study, the purity movement is patriarchy at its finest, as young women do not get to choose for themselves or their bodies. Instead, the decision is left up to their fathers, the government, and the school system. Young women fail to recognize and act on their own sexual desires due to the purity movement, which hurts them because of their lack of control over their own sexualities and bodies. How long can those girls be cooped up like that? The story shows that not only do boys and girls find it difficult to understand each other, but that girlhood is difficult. And what's making it so hard is, well, the patriarchy. We consume media that shows us women in dismembered parts or portrayed in tropes that are harmful to women and young girls especially. The concept of the male gaze has allowed so many guys to objectify women and has even put this insane pressure on us to conform to their ideals in order to be seen. And there are parents who are extra strict on their daughters knowing there are creepy guys out there who will probably lust after them and not get to know them as real people. There are guys who are praised for being active even at such a young age, but there is an expectation of purity that is put on young girls. To be born in this world as a woman, whether that be in the body of a girl or a boy, is to be cursed with the constant fear of someone or something. To dismantle the system that perpetuates that fear is a responsibility. We have to further the discussion on the male gaze and its effects on society, both in the media and in real life, especially now when young boys have bald, chauvinistic men as their role models. And we have to provide space for young girls to express and be themselves, to not treat young girls and women as just inevitable tragedies. Lux was the last to go. 